Hey guys, Chris from Versus 3D here. I am doing an unboxing, build, and first print video today. I'm really excited. The folks over at Formbot slash Vivadino sent me the Raptor 2. Alright, here we go. Don't mind me, I'm a little crouched down. Um, I have some limited space here in the workshop because all of my printers are taking up all of the space in the other room, so I'm out here in my design studio, which is over there. So, here we go. I'm going to start by... I've already cut the straps. There's no tape on this box. i got to say, one thing I'm really impressed with is it made it here from China in three days, and it's, uh, the box is very small for a printer of this size. So this is a 400 by 400 by 500 machine. I also own the T-Rex 2 Plus. They were also kind enough to send me the 3.0 upgrade to the T-Rex, so I'm gonna be doing another video on that, so stay tuned for that. But for right now, let's open the box. So in typical style, and don't mind this mic, this uh, camera stand over here, I've got a, a GoPro filming the top view. Um, it's packaged, there's actually plenty of room in the box still, which is amazing. So it is packaged very well. They never uh, fall short, I'm gonna throw that over there. They never fall short of packing their product well. So we've got a box of stuff here another box of stuff here which I can't quite get to yet I'm gonna first I'm gonna pull out the upper gantry and let's see what's attached to that just this wire and we're gonna just put that onto the side over here I don't have a lot of space so bear with me now I have all these little guys They also sent me the laser engraver kit, so safety glasses. That's really important. I'll just put those over there. So now, let's see what we have going on here. You can see this big orange cable here. This is the power cable because their upgraded version has a Kinovo bed with an SSR already pre-installed. And what else do we have in this box? We've got a kilo of filament. And the other box of good stuff. I am going to cut here and we'll come back when it's all set up on the table. In typical you know, Formbot Vividino style, that's their new name by the way, in case I didn't say that, Formbot changed their name to Vividino. Um, everything was packaged beautifully, I have to say. Um, the X gantry was extremely tightly wrapped in plastic wrap. It was not gonna move anywhere. Everything in the boxes, I just cut them open and you can see how beautifully everything is packaged. I pulled a couple things out. Um, I had ordered or asked them to send me some extra heaters and thermistors, so they included those in the box. I've got my tools. I'm guessing this is a power adapter for the laser engraver. Standard USB cable. This is the actual laser engraver. Nice heavy power cord. the extruder and hot end and the SD card was in here but I actually took it out already now in here we've got our data cable this is our spool mount and then the big boys in here I'm gonna pull this top piece out Let's pull it all in at once here's the LCD 
the LCD cables that are attached to the control box. This control box really excites me because I know this is their new board. They've added a new fan. Um, they went to, I believe this is an 80 millimeter fan. They're using TMC 2208 stepper drivers in here. This thing is going to be quiet and I'm really excited about that because I have so many loud printers already. I'm excited to have a quiet one finally. All right, so starting off, we are gonna just pull these two massive NA screws out here. And this is gonna mount the upper gantry to the base unit. So they do include this giant Allen wrench, so you can do that. And I've always found that the easiest way to do this is to turn the unit on its side. So I'm gonna move some stuff around and I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm gonna stand up straight. You're not gonna see my head. I don't care, I'm not important. The printer is. Here we go. One thing I did forget to mention, again, which is a feature that I absolutely love about my T-Rex 2 Plus, is the built-in G-code controlled LED light. This thing is super bright. M225 turns it on, M224 turns it off. You can put it right into your slicing profiles. It's awesome just to have. It's super handy. We have to move the bed all the way to the front. Then that leaves us room to just drop the upper gantry right into place. Now I'm just gonna take this M8 screw and I'm going in. Super easy to do. All right, I'm just gonna make that snug, not super tight yet. Let's get the other side in. Now I'm gonna spin the whole Raptor around, being careful of the power plug and the Z stepper on this side, the cable. I think now that I have one in, I'm just going to tip it up and do it that way. Okay. One other new feature of this printer that I did not mention yet is their new PEI sheet that comes pre-installed. So, let's get some cables together and we'll see where we go next. Okay, now we're going to install the control box. So I'm just going to loosen these finger screws with the T-nuts. So they'll pop right in. Now, what I found is it's typically easier to insert the data cable first. Lock that into place. Now I'm going to plug this power cable in. And then lock it down with the T-nuts. You should be able to see this over here. If not, I'm going to just spin it. over here. So what I did is I just inserted the cable here, the power cable went in, and then just tighten these finger screws. And 
One thing I love about, again, FormBot machines, or the Vidino machines, is I love the button that they use. It's not your standard scroll wheel that everyone uses. This actually is very clicky, and it responds very well. So I like this style. And I have a cheat sheet over here so I know which cables go where. So the gray cable goes into EXP1. And these do have a tab on them, so let's just make sure you put them in the right way. And the black cable goes into EXP2. Now this also has a T-nut and a thumb screw. So we're going to just loosen that. And we're going to place that right here and screw that into place. Okay, so now the screen's attached. Let's move on. Now we're going to move on to mounting the extruder. They've made some improvements to the previous version on this. They've got a really nice part cooling fan that spans the entire, or almost the entire radius. So it still has a great BL touch, basically an E3 DV6, and a 5015 blower fan. And they've also added a filament out sensor. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just install this extruder. We're going to unscrew these three screws. I'm just going to grab some tools. So this is a 2.5 millimeter nut. Just going to unscrew these three screws here. And then we're going to just place this directly on the housing. You screw right in. There's three holes right here that line up. Just in case you missed that, it's these three screws right here. And those are on there nice and snug. Another thing I want to point out here is you can see it on this other view here. This is the SSR connected to the Kinovo bed. So, and another thing to note down here, they've added a really nice cable chain for the bed because that was one thing on my T-Rex 2 Plus. I found that the bed cable just kind of flopped around and back, so I think this is a really great improvement. Over on the front, we're going to connect the x-axis limit switch, and that's the um, the four-pin cable is for the motor, and the three is for the limit switch, and they go right here on the side. These are also pinned, so they only go one way, and those go right in there like that. And the Z cables, one is actually hiding right over here, and it only fits one way. And there's going to be another one hiding over here somewhere. There it is. So we've got those in. Now that LED cable is kind of hiding back here. It's coming right down out of the top upper gantry. And we're going to just pop that in. We're going to go with the screws facing toward the back of the machine. And we'll just plug that right in. And all of our wires are connected. Now, we're going to move on to the spool holder. Loosen this 
this up. And the other one. Alright, what do we got here? That's a three millimeter. Yep. Alright, so we're gonna just take this first one. You want to make sure that you have this angled section here on the back. And just screw that right in. Nice and flat. Now we're going to just open up this other spool here. Which is quite nicely vacuum sealed, might I add. And also sealed with plastic. Now I'm just going to pop this on here, just so I know where to place this one. So I know that that's okay right there. So now you can see the spool hold the spool will sit right there and roll on the bearings. I think it actually might be a little too far spaced. I'm gonna move it in just a little bit. We're putting this right in the center because we have a cable snap right here. So now, yep, that rolls nicely right on its, the bearings. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the data cable. This is set to only install one way. So they include a screwdriver. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the end that's further away from this little carabiner grip here, and we're gonna screw that in right here on the top of the box. Make sure that goes in nicely. There we go. Now this, the way this runs, this goes up through this connector here and then down. Then you take the key ring and lock it onto this end. Then this end goes into the extruder. And I think this is a really nice feature. It keeps this cable out of the way. You just take this cable, or this cable tie here, and you pull it through. And that keeps that cable in place. Okay, and we're just about ready to turn it on. So I'm just gonna reach back here. I've already plugged in the power cable and the bed cable. You can hear the BL touch click. The LED comes on, nice and bright. I don't hear anything. That's amazing. The 
fan is running and it is dead silent. The heatsink fan is running and it is dead silent. I am going to be in love with this machine. Okay, the last thing we're going to do before we do anything is I'm just going to double check to make sure this gantry is level or very close to level. So I'm going to take a pair of digital calipers and I'm going to measure it from the Y um, tracks. All right, so we have 144. and 144. So that's great, it came like that. So I'm slide that bed back, and just in case you didn't see and I didn't point it out in the earlier section, the SSR is back here. So now, I know the BL touch worked because I heard it activate, so I'm going to do some stuff on the control panel. Okay, so I'm gonna just press the button and I am going to go to motion and auto home. Wow. I, I don't even have any words as to how quiet this machine is. Do you hear anything except me? I just, I, I'm, I'm honestly stunned at how quiet this machine is. Okay, now we're gonna calculate our Z offset. So I'm gonna hit the control button. I'm gonna to go to motion and move axis. Then I'm gonna move Z. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a plain old piece of paper and slide it right under the nozzle and then we're gonna move it one millimeter at a time. Right now it's at 6.5. We're gonna write that down. Now we're gonna lower this down just by turning the knob to the left. I'm gonna keep my piece of paper in my hand as we get lower. Wow, that's almost perfect. It's a little too tight. So now I'm gonna move, go down to 0.1 millimeters and I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit at a time. I think 0.5 is good. So now I'm gonna go back to main, configuration, advanced settings, probe Z offset. So now I'm going to raise this up and when I'm raising it it's actually the number is going down. this really really fast all the way to one And 
then store settings. Then I'm going to go back to the main again. Go to motion. Auto home. Take my paper away. Now I'm going to slide my paper back under. And I'm going to go back to motion, move axis, move Z. I'm going to move it 0.1 millimeter at a time. And I'm going to move that quickly down to just above zero. And then I'm going to just grab my paper, move it down. Still a little bit too snug for me. So we basically just repeat this until we have our offset where we want it. Oh, it didn't save. Okay, if this happens to you where your settings don't store, all you need to do is this. Go to configuration and scroll down to restore failsafe. If you hit that, you'll hear the beep again and then you'll be able to adjust your Z offset. Okay, now we're gonna load some filament. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna snip this off right here. We'll be getting another roll. And I'm gonna make sure I cut my filament at an angle. Now, I'm going to put the filament through the out sensor. Push down. And feed the filament straight down until it stops. And I can push that just a little bit. And I can see a tiny bit came out. Now we're going to go ahead and print from the SD.
All right, here we are, and here's Benchy. Number one, it's amazing to finally see somebody use Benchy as their test model. Not a cat, not a hand, not anything else, a Benchy. So you can actually see what your printer does right out of the box. Now, I'm gonna say I have not touched this up. I have not pulled anything off of it, no strings, nothing. There, was, there were literally no strings on this entire model. You can see it actually looks really, really good just with their stock slicing profile. That was my cat sneezing. Um, you can see the, uh, the, the arch here. You can see there's very, very little sagging. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it just, it really looks great. There's no bumps really. There, it, it really came out nice. So let's have some final thoughts on the Raptor. So quick rundown again, I'm probably gonna forget things. We've got 4040 aluminum extrusion, uh, G-code controlled LED, linear rails up top and on the bottom here. Uh, industrial ball screws instead of just regular threaded rods, filament out sensor, BL touch, E3D V6, PEI sheet, TMC2208 stepper drivers, and I'm sure I'm forgetting five other things. Meanwhile, power supply. Um, it, it's just so quiet. It's sitting here. It's been working in my office for the last couple days right next to where I work. And it hasn't bothered me. I, I barely, I have to keep looking over to see if it's running. And that's crazy. I have a TV running and I can't hear the printer at all. So I guess my final thought would be, wow, I guess I, I, I really wish I could get rid of all my CR10 machines in various sizes and get a bunch more Raptors. That would be awesome. Maybe FormBot will send me some more. Um, anyway, thank you for sitting through this super long video, but I really wanted to go very detailed and really get as much info about this printer out as I can because I really, really do love it. I, I have yet to find something I can complain about. So for me, I love to complain. So for me not to find anything to complain about, that's a big deal. So anyway, I hope uh, this video helped you guys and uh, hope to see you in some Raptor groups. Take care.